Welcome to the Queen Divas Queens of Fitness podcast. Join your hosts, three-time WBFF world champions and WBFF royalty, Alicia Gowans and Stephanie Ayala McHugh, as we explore all things female health, training, competing, mindset, and living the fitness life every day. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the newest edition of the Queen Divas podcast, where Stephanie Ayala and McHugh and I talk about all things health, well-being, and really just women's, you know, women's well-being, isn't it? A really good one today. Yes, I'm and super pumped. What's up, you guys? We are super excited because in this space today, we're bringing on a amazing guest who we really felt was just such you know, great timing, actually, coming on from the back end of last week's episode, where we connected to discuss all things adversity, and a space where realistically, Stephanie could have gotten very stuck very quickly. And she has not done that. She's still taking action towards the goal. (laughs) She's she's training in a moon boot, Brit. I'm about to introduce Brit, the lovely Brit Frank, who's got more, she's got more numerals behind her name than I think I even do with the amount of qualifications this lady's got. She is a licensed psychotherapist, which is the very first psychotherapist we've had on the uh, podcast. So Woo-hoo. Congratulations, uh-huh. Britt, for being our Welcome. number one. And um, what I love most is she's a specialist in bringing, um, you know, research and evidence-informed practice to the concept of what we just touched on, which is getting stuck, getting stuck in life, you know, um, moving beyond a place where, you know, you might be your own biggest issue in that, in that, you know, progression forward. So she's actually a trauma specialist. She is an author of this amazing new piece called The Science of Stuck. And she actually does a lot of speaking. So Britt is coming on today to talk us through and navigate with some great tools and resources and tips and challenges for you to work through, um, you know, how to progress through patterns where you might be stuck. Stuck. <laughs> Stuck. No, I love that term. It sounds so science, but, <laughs> but it's actually so yes. true. It's so true. How many of us have been stuck in so many oh. forms and so many different, you know, formats, not just in like our career, maybe, you know, just our self-development, you know, relationships or what we want to do in life. And I think this is so relevant with what Ali even said in our last episode, adversity yeah. and kind of what we need to do to change our mindset and the way we really look at things. It's our perspective and kind of how we, you know, tackle it, right? Like it's all about, you know, creating maybe that goal or, you know, what we're trying to achieve, but what is stopping us from getting there? What is it that, you know, is like making us be stuck? So Brittany, welcome to our podcast. Um, Please tell us, tell us a little bit about your book and obviously we'll roll into asking you some questions and kind of um, getting some info about you know how to you know transform our mind and get unstuck stuck well thanks so much for having me I totally messed up the time zone so I was in my pajamas I didn't do my I would have had my hair done my ring light so I'm just rolling with it this is just okay let's just do this hey this is all organic please do not stress on that we all show up this way so I have different. all the letters after my name and a shiny resume, but I have this hot mess, disastrous history of addiction and dysfunction and crazy relationships I, and like, yeah. all I of think this. This is what makes you so good, though. And I love I loved. I was really. <laughs> I was reading some of this in the book and I'm giggling at some of this stuff that she's writing because she's talking about, like, I did not have my shit together. I'm sitting there smoking packets after packets after packets of cigarettes. Like, she's, <laughs> it was hilarious. But it's okay, great. so Ali, you've read the book. I have not. So, so the listeners can kind of, you know, know where we're at. Cause I'm going to be the very curious P in this pod right now. <laughs> like, yes, Ali's up to date. I, I'm going to have to catch up and read this book. Hey, Britt, one thing I did love, though, about your hot mess past, which I think that is, it's, it's relevant for us to touch on this because we're in the fitness space and we see a lot of this disordered eating, disordered relationship with body mm-hmm. dysmorphia, self-acceptance and food. And Britt experienced this firsthand. So she had this. She, this was part of her hot mess journey. So I'll let Britt, um, you know, go through that a little bit and tell us how you went from like college to all of this roller coaster right. ride to now being who you are today. 
So, and I love your work so much because it's so positive and it's so focused on being holistic and being healthy and integrated. Like it's one thing to just be a superwoman, wonder woman powerhouse, but I love that you're about let's be happy and let's be healthy and let's be connected to other people. I'm just such a fan. So no, the book, the science of stuck, I wrote it because as a therapist, I hear every day from people, I'm not hitting my goals. I'm not doing the things I want to do. And the problem is that I just suck. I'm lazy. I'm unmotivated. I'm broken. What's wrong with me? And I hear that day in and day out from people and not people like who have a crazy making story like I do people who are generally high functioning who you know their life's kind of sort of mostly work they're not like I was smoking methamphetamine in crazy (laughs) places it's like their lives are working but they're like it must be me I have enough money I have a safe enough place to live like what's wrong with me And the book is called The Science of Stuck because there are physiological reasons why we often can't do the things we want to do. Now, my disclaimer here, and it's so important to me to say this, if you are in an oppressive environment, if you're in a domestic violence situation, if you're in a a war-torn country, none of what I'm saying applies to you. Everything that I talk about when it comes to the science of being stuck assumes that you're safe enough and that your basic needs are met. You know, if you're addicted to drugs and homeless and severe mental illness and poverty, this is not what we're talking about. We're talking about people who have the resources. They know what they want to do. There's no logical reason why they're not, but for whatever reason, they're not. And this book is to fill in the gap. Yeah. Like it's not you, you're not broken. Yes. Preach and you're it. probably more normal than you even are aware of because this is, and this is why I loved it. And I was like, oh my gosh, we need to get Brit on the podcast because this is stuff we see day in, day out with our client base. We've got mm-hmm. women that are, you know, every single level of the spectrum. When you think about the types of client base you could possess, you know, Steph and I, Steph and I have got a very diverse scope of people and largely they are exactly what you've discussed they are you know actually quite stable in life they are actually usually quite successful people they're actually also you know safe relatively covered off if you look at all Maslow's hierarchy of needs everything is relatively met it's like there, there is sometimes just no reason why this person is oscillating like a hamster on a wheel and getting nowhere fast, but it happens. And I was like, wow, this is profound. And I think powerful, powerful. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Because I think we what all she time. touched on, Ali, you're right. Like we have these clients that we, we deal with day to day, you know, and it's more internal work. It's really yeah. not the workouts, right? Or the meals per se. Um, it's actually what they see within themselves. And I truly believe it's like how you see yourself is really what's more important because oh. you're looking for self-validation all the time, whether if it's through your career and your status or marital status for your relationship, right? Or trying to, you know, say your age or all these things are number related or status related, uh, whether if you're in the fitness realm, whether it's weight, oh my gosh, how many of our clients get oh. stuck with the whole, I'm stuck at this weight, I'm not progressing. But in reality, they really are progressing in other factors, you know, performance. We talk about this so much in previous episodes, you know, about self-reflection, you know, obviously making sure you don't, you know, attach yourself to numbers, um, you know, comparison, how many times do we compare ourselves to other people's yep. lives? And I think this is all very, very relative as far as how we look at our mindset and perspective. And my question to Brittany, you know, I think it's pretty easy. It's like, how, what's a, a good strategy, you know, or what's something that you would even recommend? What's your biggest tip as to how to set yourself up, you know, to overcome some of these challenges, whether if it is maybe some internal work or maybe what, amongst the clients that you work with, what's like, what's the most common and what is one of your, you know, obviously biggest tips? Well, what's nice is we can approach this work from every which way. We can do the inner work. We can do interpersonal work. The workouts themselves are powerful for healing things. But my number one tip is this. Start with the assumption that everything you're struggling with makes sense. We do not need to dive into why or what's the origin or where in my fifth grade year did someone look at me wrong and now I can't go to the gym. Like, it doesn't matter. But number one... The self-talk should not be, I'm lazy, why am I stuck? The very first thing to tell yourself is, wow, 
I'm struggling here and this makes sense. Hell if I know why it makes sense, but it makes sense. Step one. Step yeah. two, ask yourself, how would I talk to someone that I love if they were struggling? What would I say? What would they need to hear? That's a good one. What would they want Very from good. me? And then step three is make any choice. And we're so quick. And I'm sure in your industry, you see this all of the time. Well, yeah, I worked out, but it's not like I got my record. Well, yeah, I went to the gym, but it's not like I did the four hour workout. It's like, if you take one step in any direction, you are now unstuck, like stuck turns into unstuck the second you do anything. Yes, so absolutely. even if it's this small, even if all you can do today is get off the couch and put on your shoes and act as if you're going to leave, but you don't, great. Let's bank that as a win. And tomorrow <laughs> we'll throw something like, new. That's you know? like, progress. It is progress from before. It's very true. And I, and um, identifying the problem. It's not a problem. It's okay. And you're then saying, you know, obviously you're able to accept it, right? Like accepting the problem that it's okay. And obviously you're able to, you know, make sense of action. Like taking action is yeah, I think the most important thing. Action, right? Yes, so I think people hate that because oh. they're like, I'm a go-getter. I need to do all of this. I'm like, if you shame, I get it that you didn't do what you wanted to do. And I'm not saying you should be happy that you went for a five minute walk instead of a three hour run. But if you beat yourself up, you're just going to end up going back into a cycle where let's just bank the tiny win you got and then tomorrow you'll get another one and eventually you're going to be rocking and rolling so we have to bank the small wins and i think um just to actually quote something from the start of brit's book which describes or i guess gives a little bit more context for someone if they're thinking about you know well, what is stuck what does that look like i i just loved this i thought this was so well said you wrote that the developmental psychologist and Harvard professor Robert Keegan, so we'll give the credit to Robert here, described stuck as being um, trying to drive a car with your foot on the brake and the gas at the same time. So you have one foot pressed on the gas. That's your good intention, where you want to go. You want to get outside and do the, the, do the walk, right? And then the other foot is slammed on the brake. So you're acting in opposition. So that's where your Netflix is on, you're chilling. There's, you know, Cheerios beside you, like nothing's happening. And then you're revving your engines in both, you know, on both those pedals, getting nowhere really fast. And you're just getting super exhausted. And that's when you start labeling things. So this is where when you think about what, you know, Brits just discussed, just even putting the shoes on and breaking the pattern of sitting there with the Netflix remote is already starting to take the foot off the gas a little bit so you can actually accelerate forward. And we see a lot of this in particular in the fitness realm, you know, where people have these good intentions to start something tomorrow and then they do completely derail themselves. Now, you know, one of the things that I hear a lot in this process is, they'll get paralyzed by anxiety, anxiety about going to the gym, anxiety about getting started, anxiety about, you know, what people are going to think of them as they step forward into their new self. And you have an entire chapter on this. And there were so many parts when I was going through this where I was like, oh, heck yeah. I have a coach that works for me. He's one of my very good friends and she suffered from anxiety. She had a, a traumatic situation that happened to her um, just with an, an injury perspective. And it's, kind of still loops through for her and she'll get those little paralyzing moments, but she's breaking through them a lot better. Every single, you know, like episode that comes up, she's, it's, ch she's changing her approach to it and how she like processes it and sits in it is changing. So I was actually literally sending her quotes out of the book and going, woman, look at this. And this is what you're doing. Great. And this is why this is working. And I think you need to try this because there's some really great stuff in there. But for all the people listening to this, because I think anxiety is a number one thing at the moment that we see more and more of. Everyone seems to have panic attacks, anxiety attacks, like their fear and doubt and their, their moment of stuck is coming from this place of, you know, I'm like, it's, it's worry. It's worry about a future event that's not even happened yet. It's really, it's really prevalent. So, you know, maybe talk us through a little bit about that and how you talk about anxiety being a superpower not something that should be debilitating. It's so really I hate feeling anxious. Like that I used to have anxiety disorders and panic disorders and anxiety is one of the worst feelings that we can have in our bodies that just like I'm shaking, my heart is pounding, I'm sweating. I feel like I'm going crazy. I feel like I'm going to die. So I am not saying that anxiety doesn't suck. Like it's yeah. bad. 
However, mm. here's the big but. If we don't have the discomfort of anxiety, how are we supposed to know? It's like working out. Working out isn't pleasant. Like it doesn't <laughs> feel good, you know? Like it hurts. <laughs> Exactly. It hurts, but if you didn't ever have the discomfort of tearing your muscles down, how are you supposed to grow and how are you supposed to develop and how are you supposed exactly. to change? So anxiety is like the muscle ripping metaphor. You know, it's like lifting weights. Anxiety is awful. As this is, anxiety is a sign that there's some kind of growth that's needing to happen. But yeah. what we all do, because it's scary, is we say, oh my God, anxiety is my problem. Like, Anxiety is not your problem. Anxiety is the pointer telling you where the problem is. Is it the relationship that you're pretending is okay, but it's not okay? And again, I have so much compassion on this because I lived like the craziness of it. But I had a gal, you know, I have an anxiety disorder. No, you don't. You hate your husband. You hate your job. <laughs> and it's like, you don't have an anxiety. Can I say that on your podcast? I'm sorry. I love so it. This is actually exactly. So it, this is actually what we, exactly how we would speak to our clients. So it's great. Okay. It's like having the psychotherapist educated, qualified version of reaffirming what we've probably already said. <laughs> Uh, we are very, very straightforward. Okay. So I you it. keep at it. I, you're preaching it. So you keep the floor is all yours. Okay. So, and we're very quick to say my problem is anxiety because it's really scary now. And again, some people with the gym are anxious about going, but I will tell you more than, and I've been sitting in front of people all day, every day for a decade. I cannot tell you how many people are scared to get fit because they're afraid they'll realize that they're unhappy in their relationship and they're oh going to their marriage. Such... It's the I... like the dirty little secret that no one wants to talk about. I was like, okay, well, I'm not <laughs> suggesting you go home and tell your spouse that, but find a safe person, tell your coach, tell your therapist. I'm yeah. scared to get fit because as soon as I get healthy, I'm going to realize everything needs to change. This yep. marriage isn't working. This relationship isn't working. Yep. My all of the things. And so even the things that we yeah. want, that we actually want are going to come with the cost. And mm -hmm. so that's the, that if you ever have someone that's like, I don't know what's wrong with me. And you can, I do ask yeah. them, all right, well, yeah. who are you going to have to drop once you get healthy and happy? Do you know, this is really common, Brit. This is actually like, we, and we've done complete podcasts. We actually did a whole episode on, on cutting people out you. in your circles. Yeah. yeah. And that don't be shocked they're going to change and they're going to change because you're moving into a new space that the people around you are not in and they don't share it and the reason you've sat there and probably ate all the foods removed yourself from social settings done nothing about your physical health and fitness is because you don't feel like you deserve it because you're in this stuck pattern inside of these relationship contexts so no we see a lot of this and we often talk about the fact that when you see the women that flourish and blossom, they step into themselves and they create this whole new life. It's very common that a divorce or a breakup follows pretty closely. I've up. watched it. I've watched it happen actually a few times amongst people that are now stepping into their real selves, like, and they're discovering that they're creating, you know, who they've wanted to become their whole time. And they actually finally had the guts, the balls to, you know, chase that, you know, girl, that woman that they're trying to create. And the husband does not, you know, okay with it. They're, you know, completely, um, you know, trying to sabotage maybe everything that they're doing to become better and saying that they're just vain and then they, you know, they don't care about anybody else but themselves. And this is all, you know, self-centered. Oh my gosh. If they put the, pin, the finger right back at you, I really am, you know, big, big believer that that person has a lot more self-reflection that they right. need to do within themselves. Because if they're putting the finger at you and they're saying that you're the one doing something wrong and all you're doing is bettering yourself, trying to get healthier, trying to get fit, I mean, there's something obviously off about that relationship. It doesn't matter. It, could, it just could be a best friend. It could be a girlfriend, right? Yeah, like, correct. it's going to literally be the one Even trying to always members. bring you down. Even family members. We see it a lot with family yeah. members too. Oh, Britt, one of the biggest things you see actually is, um, and this is, you know, context of growing up as well. Oftentimes it's that whole, what will my parents think? Or, mm -hmm. um, you know, like I've, I've developed these situational um, factors from my mom or I've learned it from this situation. And then they don't want to get better because then it's almost like they're putting their mom down or whatever. Yeah. It's crazy, but we see all this stuff 
all the time. So you're saying, you know, obviously we get anxious over these type of relationships, which is kind of when we're, you know, obviously developing these moments of, you know, uh, feeling stuck. So we're talking about anxiety. And I think that this is pretty, you know, important because we all, I think this whole world deals with anxiety in some shape you know, or form, um, whether if it's going on stage, I get anxious. Oh my God, I'm nervous. And I'm like almost shaking in my boots, but I'm trying not to show it. I'm just trying to overthink it with something else. I'm like trying to, you know, make sure my hair is fine, <laughs> putting on some more lipstick, trying to do some posing, trying to get out of my head and not think that I want to puke about, about to go on stage. And you hear this from me guys, like, and I've been on stage multiple times and I still get this way. So I just know now I have to do some things, you know, to make sure I don't overthink and I just don't, you know, obviously let myself simmer any thoughts. Yeah, you in that vibe of, oh, you know, all the things. I get myself out. I put some music on. I get out of it, right? I get out of that funk and I start trying to, you know, obviously, you know, dance a little bit, you know, hang out with some people, talk with some, you know, girls and completely forget about that anxious feeling and obviously all the nerves that are just making me feel like I'm sweating so much that my makeup's coming off I am literally my hair is falling down so uh, this is even just a a, a moment for me and this is a complete different type of anxiety that I'm even bringing up but you could even have stage fright you can have obviously other moments where you're not good in social settings just period so I think all of this is a very very important topic another um another really interesting one that I'm seeing a fair bit more of lately is um fear of aging So anxiety around aging and anxiety around potential mortality. And I'm, I'm telling you, Britt, this isn't coming from like people in their sixties and seventies. I'm witnessing this in ladies in their thirties. So it's it's a thing. So I started doing, um, I don't do what you guys do, but I started doing like amateur circus performing in the last couple of years. Cool. It's, uh, it's fun but i'm in my 40s and i'm looking at the girls in their 20s and i'm like i'm one foot in the grave I have, you know? <laughs> the fear of aging is really real but if you scratch under the surface i think the fear of aging is really the fear of a life left unlived and undone yeah. i mean yeah i don't want to like i i obsess about my face and my hair and i have all the products and all of the things but we want to have a life that is lived and not survived, not just like, okay, okay, I have a job. It's like, we want to live, come to the end of our life and know that we kicked ass doing all of the things that we wanted to do. And the anxiety that we might not is good. If you're not worried that you're going to miss your life, then you're going to miss your life. Correct. And I love what you said about the anxiety about going on stage. Cause I feel like I'm going to die when I go. And my therapist said to me, well, Britt, keep in mind, and this is a different kind of anxiety, but the physiology of excitement, of passion, is yeah. the same thing as the physiology of, actually one of my circus coaches taught me this, the physiology of anxiety is the same as excitement. So if you're about to do a thing, just tell yourself, not I'm anxious, I'm anxious. I'm excited. I'm excited. excited. I'm so pumped. Yes. I'm going to feel it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, and that's exactly, honestly, the, the, the format I approach it. It's that's the right. only I've ever been able to overcome it is thinking, I just need to not think about it. I mean, one of the moment I step on stage, I forget about everything and I let myself be present and I'm I'm in the moment and at that point honestly how many of us say we black out right Ali like how many clients come off stage and say I don't know what the hell happened on stage but I had fun right I had fun and uh, I would do it again as much as the adrenaline kicks in you just you just have the time of your life right and I, I love you I really love the fact that the physiology factor is the same that you can, your body does not distinguish between I'm shit scared and gonna, you know, do my my flight or flight flight or fight moment, or I'm pumped. Get me out there! I can't wait to get at it. You know, like I think that's very cool because you have that ability then to go. Well, I'm not actually sitting in fear. I'm sitting in this. But it action. It comes down to action. Like she yeah. even said, right? Like the third tip she gave us was, you know, to take action and actually, you know, put forth a little effort, you know, take your, you know, step forward. And I think that that all comes down to how we're even relating to all these different topics. I mean, the same topic, but same different, yeah, different ways focus. that we're explaining. <laughs> yeah. So when someone's sitting in that anxiety state, Britain, they're like, oh my God, you know, and they start, they feel in the sweats come on and they're starting to get clammy hands and they're starting to feel like, you know, literally can't breathe sometimes. Right. 
what are the go-to things that you think, you know, people should be doing, thinking about, or, you know, little exercise they can do? Because what I found very interesting, actually, because you just discussed this whole physiological process being the same. So from fear, fight or flight to, you know, obviously excitement and endorphin and adrenaline, um, because they're the same, Sometimes some of the methods that people get taught to downregulate a heightened central nervous system, so too much, you know, um, tone happening, they can actually exacerbate the problem for certain people with anxiety. So I think this is really cool to note. So if you've ever had someone and, you know, you guys have heard me talk about breath work and how much I'm into it and everything else, but I don't have a chronic anxiety state or do I experience that? So I personally have used it to desensitize pain and I've used it in the primary principle it's meant to be applied to. But if I was to issue that to even say like my coach who gets into a chronic state, she'd probably get worse. And this is super interesting. I'm going to let Britt talk about that and then talk about what her tips are because it would surprise you. And I'm linking these two for a reason because most people would say sit and breathe and sit and do this. And they will give you a go-to that seems like a blanket, but you might be making it worse. So this is super interesting for everyone listening to this and to think, am I a person A or person B? Am I like Ali and I can use it positively to desensitize the situation? Or am I person B where it would freak me the fuck out and I probably shouldn't do it? (laughs) Britt, enlighten us all. (laughs) Okay, so I love you for naming that because that's one of the biggest pushbacks I get is I'm not anti-breath work. If breath work works for you, that's great. I'm jealous because I come from the holy fuck, I'm person B and I can't tolerate breath work. So, okay. If you have a nervous system that is perceiving danger for whatever reason, whether it's excitement or a lion about to eat, it doesn't matter. Assuming that you're actually safe. If you try to deep breath your way to to down regulation, you're gaslighting your nervous system. Mm -hmm. So the hack that I use before I go on stage or before I do something, or when I'm working with clients is instead of trying to bring the symptom down, we need to complete it by making it bigger. So Dr. Peter Levine talks about this in somatic experiencing, and it's brilliant. If you feel like you want to run the fuck away, run in place as fast as you can for 30 seconds. Yeah. Well, if you feel like like the, the walls are caving in on you, then one of my favorite hacks is go to a wall and push on it as hard as you possibly yeah. can until you feel your, yeah. you know, your proprioceptive system firing and your muscles burning. When I worked in drug rehab, first session, all I ever did with my guys was I had them hold a plank and just notice, look, hey, let's give a body, you have arms, you have legs. I would just hold them there as long as they could. And then we would do it again. And then we would do it again. So instead of trying to dial it down, how can you make it bigger? Like I have crazy rituals. Like before I speak, I have to like jump on a bed and like- You yell, you like yell through the top of your lungs. And I love just it. I yell, <laughs> I dance, I look like just batshit crazy, but- So you look make, like me before stage. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Backstage is going to look so different now for you guys. Everyone's going to be like flipping it out. Do cartwheels, do handstands, you know, like make it bigger. And the number one way to combat anxiety before a thing is to sing. Because you, if you think about it, when you're anxious, you lose your voice. Like, yeah. <laughs> Right. So when you're singing and your vocal cords are vibrating, and this is where you like, you don't have to be good, but when your vocal cords are vibrating, that signals to your brain that, hey, this is excitement, not danger. And that will help shift it. I'm going to be singing all the time. That is excellent. So for me (laughs) backstage, I definitely get nervous. I always have that really random thing, Britt, where my brain actually sees me doing the dumb thing. So it sees me falling, it sees me smashing my face on the steps on the way up to the stage. Like I, I visualize myself doing all of the actual bad things I don't want to do. And then I dance. I will literally, I, st- I just, I'll be in place. You would have seen me doing it. I'm like, it's literally, cool. I'll be dancing away. I'll go up to other things. To this one. I'm I'll totally be, doing the singing this time. I'll be stage with other chicks. I'll be hallway. up on them. I'll be doing all sorts of funny shit because it makes me feel better. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that she just told us to, you know, obviously exasperate, you know, and like make it so much bigger and make it as big as you can. So in a scenario, obviously we're referring to like stage and performance and all, you know, obviously anxiety built around that. How would we relate to, you know, obviously making a big 
um, you know, commotion over maybe being anxious going into a social setting? Would you do the yeah. same thing? Yeah. Sometimes. And so, and really whether you're talking about anxiety in social situations or with a job or fitness, the mm -hmm. question, and this one, if we're going to go high level, mm -hmm. and I assume everyone that's on here is wanting to go high level, the question, and it's not, it, it's a warrior question is, are you willing to burn the shit down? Like, yeah. yeah. You may fall on your face. You may Woo! puke on the stage. You may fall on I your head. Are you willing that. to burn the shit down? And if the answer yeah. is yes, then it doesn't matter ultimately what happens once you hit the stage. Mm. doesn't matter what happens once you hit the party. It's like, is your, what's your alternative? It's burn the shit down or live like on meh. Those are your yeah. two choices. And yeah. the likelihood that you're going to burn it down is pretty small. I mean, it could happen, but it's unlikely if you've trained and you've prepped and you've had good coaching. So yeah. make the fear, don't try to shrink it and talk yourself out. Oh, I shouldn't be worried about it because it's like, no, be worried about it. Yeah. The worst thing could happen. And then are you willing to burn the shit down? And you know what's really cool about that too. I was actually, and I was talking, I talked about this, touched on this in my last episode, the latest evidence that's coming out of neuroscience on the attainment of a goal. And it's actually not about um, sort of only focusing on the success and the positive and the fluffy rainbow shit. It's actually when you go, if I don't achieve what I want, this is the downside. This is what could happen. This is the this is the negative component to it, right? So what they what they found is the driving force to taking action from a neurological point of view is actually when we recognize what we stand to lose. So you know, it's like you say, just am I ready to burn it down? And I might, and it might, I might fail, but fuck it, I'm gonna go for it anyway, because the risk of not going for it at all is way higher to me way higher to me so i think this is really cool conversation and it's also what is also good about what you just said is you're not doing the all or nothing mentality where you're like if i'm if i'm not going to win it or i'm not going to be the most popular in the room or i'm not going to get the promotion at work then i'm not even going to try you're not doing that you're saying just turn up just put in the you know the effort just do the thing and no matter what happens that's the win it's not about Absolutely. the outcome. Oh, That's the win. One thing, you know, I think we're touching, you know, obviously about anxiety. We're talking about, you know, obviously our mindset and kind of how we perceive um, these situations. But one thing I noticed the most amongst most people, amongst my clients and just people, I think in general in this world is excuses. And I think that this still all ties into kind of what we're talking about. How would you say you can overcome the always victimology mentality, making excuses about absolutely everything. And, you know, always just feeling sorry for yourself. I feel like this is still, again, part of you feeling down or maybe feeling anxious over situations because you're always creating these stories, right? About whatever it may be. I'm not good enough to be able to, you know, you know, be in that relationship. I'm not good enough to, you know, do this exercise and this workout. I'm not good enough to wear those clothes, you know, whatever it is. Uh, we're creating these stories. And I think, again, they come down to these stories that are merely excuses. I just consider everyone just always excuses themselves from the, by making excuses. Uh, so what would you say, Brittany, is, uh, you know, obviously one of those things that you see more common amongst people, you know, with excuse making or story making? <laughs> The and word excuse is such the word excuse is such a nice mushy word for <laughs> lie, right? <laughs> oh. it's not, so it so here are the two I'm things true. to anyone oh, who's struggling with excuses. Ouch. Number one, here are the two things. Number one, how's that working for you? Like, how's it working? <laughs> And it might be, and that's the kicker for some people, the yeah. excuses and the inertia, if that's working for you, I'm not here to tell you, you should live an awesome life. Like if you're cool with where you're at, fine. But the, if you're going to be honest and you're making excuses, number one, how's that working for you? Number oh, two, how true is that story you just told? And exactly. number three is, is there a potential alternative here to what you're saying? Like yeah. really? Like that's I mean, radical. I literally, I'm writing this down. This is exactly yeah. how I'm coming back to my clients. Sorry, what, y'all. What I think <laughs> is we we need all of our clients to do therapy sessions with Brit, basically. Oh yeah. <laughs> you're getting you're gonna get just a lineup yeah. of my we can tag team. team and we read a check-in. We're like, I'm just gonna send that to Brit. That's going yeah. out the ballpark <laughs> over here. Brit's, Brit's gonna knock that one out. 
<laughs> if I ever get a, a like a huge big store, I'm like, you know, you need a session with Brittany. You know, you need a break. Like, like, but you know what? We actually create a level of stuck in our own lives when we fall victim to the lies we tell ourselves. And this is the, the biggest, I think, this is the great thing about cutting through the BS and even saying it's no longer an excuse. It is a flat out lie to you is that we buy into this shit. Like we create these fabricated narratives around the reasons why we're sitting where we are. And they usually have nothing to do with the real reason. Like we blame everything external to ourself, but it's actually an internal situation that's preventing us from moving forward. Yes. And the shame problem is intense. And so I'm, I'm really big on don't shame yourself. Like I can sit here and say, I'm totally full of shit. I'm lying to myself about myself all day long. Mm. That doesn't mean I'm a bad person. Some people will take this and to a victim place of, Oh my God, I'm such a terrible person. Cause I'm a liar. It's like, we're all full of shit to a degree. <laughs> Absolutely. So my favorite exercise is at the end of the day, get out a piece of paper and wrote, write down 10 lies you told yourself today. And if you were my client, I'd say do 30, but everyone lies. Even if it's like, Hey, how's your day going? I'm good. Okay. Well, if you're not good, that's a lie. Or I'm going to go to the gym tomorrow. Like, no, you're not. That's a lie. Like you can only be honest so many days in a row before you get sick of your own shit. And yeah. you can do this very, compa- I mean, I'm not mean to my clients. I wouldn't have any, but when I say to them, great, how true is that? It's not. And how's that working for you? It's not, I'm not being a bitch about it. It's just like, we have it's to be truth. honest or we're going to stay yeah. stuck and we're not yeah. going anywhere. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, and I think, you know, what I find very interesting oftentimes is I see and hear someone tell me something. It's the polar opposite of what's reality, but they're telling me that out of fear of being a fraud. They don't want to tell you, hey, this sucks. This I need to change. I'm doing the same shit this week that I did last week. That's on me because they don't want you to think less of them. They don't want you to look at them and think that they're not that, you know, successful, independent, empowered woman that they project to the universe that they are when they're really not, they're not acting in accordance with that intention. Right. So we, I see a lot of this and I guess, how does someone discern and how do you get them to go, right? Where is my line? Other than just those top three questions, which were fantastic. What are some other signs that you get people to look for Whether they're, they're like, Oh my God, I'm doing this again. It's fucking me. So here, so when people come in and they say, I don't know why I didn't do it. It's like, if you're telling yourself, I don't know why I did it. And I get like, to a degree, that's sort of true. But if you take enough time to really look at what you're doing and ask yourself what's really going on here, the two questions are, what am I afraid of? And what's the benefit of me not doing the thing? And there's right question. Here and always there. a benefit. Always. It's, uh-huh. you know, misery loves company, but success and happiness and goals and fitness and wealth and abundance can be really lonely because you have to be willing to burn. Like you asked me, how did I go from like a meth sex and love addicted, depressed personality disorder disaster to now I had to be willing to like say goodbye to every single person and place and thing that I knew because it wasn't serving me. So People need to know the change process sucks and you're going to lose everything, but then you're going to gain everything and it's going to be a thousand times better on the flip side. And that's this part of the story people miss. Actually, you had a great post just today where it was an excerpt of you speaking on this subject and it's incredible we we are going to link um brit's you know details and tags and she'll give everyone the handles later but she actually had this post and she's talking about the fact that you know change is shit change is hard change is going to hurt change is going to you know be one of the toughest things you ever do but it is worth it and it is the one thing you need to move forward otherwise you're just going to get more of the crap that you've already gotten and you're just going to sit in the pot and keep stirring the shit around you so you know making the decision about where you want to go is taking the hard route sometimes and you are right I think um when you do put in the work and you do decide that I'm going to cut these people and I'm going to put these boundaries up and I'm not going to let people take this of my time I'm not going to say yes all the time I'm going to say no in the right places when you do these things life changes profoundly for the better I know I had to go through that process and I had to learn how to say no put boundaries in place and I literally block people like I literally Brit go see you later and don't even feel bad about it anymore 
I just do not care. And when someone does something that before I would have been so offended by, or and, and even though I know they've not handled it in the right way, I can look at them and go, oh God, I feel really sorry for you because you felt like you had to tackle it that way instead of it being, she's done this to me. Like, oh my God, that bitch. Like, I don't have that anymore. And it's it was hard to make those changes, but my life's never been better. My circle's never been better. Everything is so much more positive. So I think you're right. Cut the people, the places and the things that just bring you to this state where you're not moving. Biggest thing is what she said, guys, change is fucking hard. Okay. It is. Like I think we just forget all the time that when we're so used to doing the same thing for years over and over again, it's a habit breaking habits. Oh my God. It takes a long time and replacing them and how we think about ourselves, how we look at situations, how we're obviously their narrative, right? Everything we're talking about, these lies that we call excuses, you know, about what we're, you know, doing, you know, whether if it's for the better or if it's for the worse, like I completely agree with her. I think, um, biggest thing is that we sometimes, um, just, look at ourselves just like as a bad person or maybe glorify ourselves a little too much and we're like a good person it's a a different way you know two-way street it's it's not just like you're always self-sabotaging sometimes these people they they tell themselves a lie and they're just saying that they're better than everybody else and I mean I don't know why you believe that um I think we need to come down the pedestal sometimes and come down to the real world and understand that everyone's the same we all struggle it's all 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 of us struggle at some time of our life whether if it's a you know obviously a breakup up a career change you know you just completely feel lost in life I think it's really challenging to change and I think what we really need to take away from this is it's all within ourselves everything that we're talking about starts from within so if we can take anything from this I hope you're able to ask yourself these questions that are very tough questions probably the toughest ones you'll ask yourself because I mean they're they're really true questions and I'm going to be adding these to my daily you know, questions that, you know, with affirmations, as well as, you know, kind of the way I look at maybe my narrative or how I'm approaching maybe my day, because I think this is very powerful. And I hope you guys all are learning and taking notes because it's very, very important. I'm going to be reading your book next, Brittany. So it's it's on my list. So what's um, good about the book, Steph, is that she has chapters of specific sort of areas. So say you are someone with anxiety, you go to that chapter. If you, you don't have to read it cover to cover. So you can go to the parts where you go, yep, that's me that's me that's me and then later on you might go I wouldn't Uh, mind seeing how the family construct falls into this and you might go to the family side like whatever it is that's relevant you can go to it and each individual chapter will talk you through the science and the you know the supporting infrastructure for that topic but then she'll give you the if you do this don't you know don't do this do this and it'll give you activities which is great Because if you're not able to take data and information and make it practical, then it's to take action. You'll get nothing out of it, right? But Britt, you know, one of the things that um, and I've I've had this situation in my life before too, that we see people do, there's fear of change because, and this is the worst one, and I was so guilty of this. My God, it's the fear of how big it's gonna be to go through it. Like I did this, um, where it was just I got married really young for all the wrong reasons and it was the wrong relationship. And I really should have walked out five, six years earlier than I did. And I finally did. But it like the thing that prevented me was that I had all of the trappings and the, you know, my world looked perfect to everyone else from the outside, but I was miserable. And anyway, I, uh, I feared the process. I feared the process of loss, the financial, you know, downfall, the change in, you know, the way you approach your schedule, your routine, the property, you know, breakup, like everything. I feared it all. So I stayed five years longer than I fucking should have. But how dumb is that? Like I even listened to myself say that out loud. And I'm like, what a tard. I was such a spinner. But <laughs> at the same time, it's made me actually a lot of what I am today. And I'm really grateful for all of the lessons and the hardships that I went through. And I now know, don't delay ripping the Band-Aid off. Just rip it off. If you've got a wound, just rip it the fuck off and move on because delaying it makes it worse and I see a lot of people daily that have similar situations and it might be the wrong job 
It might be, and they stay because they're fearing the process of applying for other things and being turned down or rejection, or they fear, um, you know, a, a hard or difficult conversation with a parent that needs to be had to break a dependency situation and they won't have it. So they keep, you know, rotating through these patterns of really negative environments, you know, and I'm sure you see a lot more than what we have, but, and it's probably a lot more common than what people think, but what do you sort of say to people when, when they're in that situation where it's because they, they actually know what they've got to do and they actually feel it with every cell of their being that they're not where they should be, but they fear that journey. They fear how hard it's going to be. They fear what may or may not come out. Like you just said it, Ali. The reason why they fear it's because it's fucking hard. Yeah. Back to going back, it's hard. They know it's hard. So I'll let her tune into that. But I mean, <laughs> what do you what do you say, Britt? Like if I had walked into your office and I was sitting down and I was telling you about my situation um, and then coming up with all the reasons and all the excuses as to, because they were, I was lying to myself for a very long time um, to stay stuck in it out of fear of what I'd have to do to get out of it? Like, what do you say to someone as stupid as I was? <laughs> well, first I would say you're not stupid. That made sense to that version of you at the time. It wasn't like, it might not have been, and I did it too, it wasn't my best look, but it made sense. So, you know, you can have compassion on yourself without co-signing on your own bullshit. So I'm really big, <laughs> don't beat yourself up. So if you came into my office, I'd ask you this, forget about the hows and the whys and the lies. I would say, is today the day you're ready to leave? And if the answer is no, let's not waste time fight. I should. And I know I really want to, and I need to, it's like, that's going to waste the rest of your day and all your bandwidth. Ask yourself once a day is today the day I am ready to walk. And if the answer is no fucking fine, we'll find other things for you to do. Maybe you need more skills before you can leave because you know where you're walking. You're going to have to do a job and get an apartment. Maybe you need more support. Maybe you need more resources. So yeah, right. whether it's a job or relate, whatever it is, don't, even if it's a drug addiction, when I work okay. with people with like hardcore drug addictions, is today the day you're ready to quit? Okay, no, what's the truth? Yes, it is, I'm ready. Like, no, like no lies. Is today the day you're done? If the answer is no, fine. Then let's do the other work so we can get yeah. you ready to say yes. But we waste so much time with the I should and I ought to. And, you know, I've stayed in relationships well past the expiration date. You know, they've got mold and they're fuzzy and there's critters crawling on them. But it's like I wasted all that time instead of fighting with myself once a day and only once a day. Is today the day I'm ready to be done? Yes or no? If it's yes, we're in business. If it's no, great. What are the next 10 things that need to happen? So that maybe tomorrow the answer to that question is yes. And ask yourself once a day and only once a day. Yeah, because when you think about it, like, man, my biggest fear was, you know, I had, I was the driving force financially and I had all of the things and all the investments and everything else. And it was this fear of the loss of those things and how that would happen. But you know what the dumb thing is? And I think about this now, I'm like, what a retard. I accumulated so much more in the time that I stayed. Oh, I had more to lose. And it's just... You know, it blows my mind. But I tell you what, though, I, I don't do those things anymore. I'm very straight up, very upfront. And the minute that something feels off, I action it. I move away from it. I, I do not ever procrastinate or sit in a space like that. And sometimes I think, and I'm sharing this story for our listeners, because they're going to think that they'll never get through it. And they're going to think that, you know, um, and the biggest mistake I see is when they just repeat that pattern. Whereas I think if you make that big leap, take that hardship and change, you then change ongoing and you don't become that person that carries that baggage into the next thing and into the next thing and does the same things like you you really want to have that lesson and then that's it you're done and you you don't repeat it you know it's 100% made me better at making decisions and actually actioning things in the moment rather than having that delayed oh my god but all of the things that I've got to go through to get there feeling but um but I that was a very real thing for me and you you have this innate ability after you work through these things to look back at it and you laugh at yourself. Like you just go, 
what a spinoff yeah. like actually well, like, like, how many like, how many times have we ever thought like what was <laughs> I thinking I can't even remember but Ali what you said you know that being relationship you know related I still think it relates to so many other things like with like you know your career and your job or you know kind of where you're at in your environment and it's about you know cutting ties and uh, I really think that it's our circle and our support network that are going to level us up if there's people that are you know bad apples in your circle that are always bringing, you know, the circle down in some, you know, form, or there's just negativity all the time, that's going to obviously pour over to you too. So trying to be around people, you know, just generally in life that make you laugh, that support your, you know, dreams that make you better. Um, all of this is going to help you obviously find and, you know, feel the most yourself. Um, I think that at, at the end of the day, it's just how you feel. And, um, trying to really better yourself day to day and baby steps. I think one of the other takeaways I take from Brittany today is how she breaks everything down into baby steps and small steps, you know, obviously build up that bigger picture and you're going to eventually get there, whether if it is yeah. in a year's time, you know, in a few months time, whatever it is that your goal, your task, whether if it's to change jobs, to get on a stage, you know, obviously to, you know, leave a relationship or get into a relationship or start dating again. Maybe you're just anxious to start dating again, or, you know, getting back on the scene, whatever it is, you know, trying to, you know, build that up day to day. You're not going to get there overnight. Just same with fitness. You're not going to lose the weight all overnight or in a week time you know you have to build these habits and we have to you know obviously achieve them through baby steps you're not going to be perfect every day we have to build resilience and understand ourselves i think all this internal work all these questions that we have to ask ourselves is very important for all of us uh to kind of maybe implement uh, along with affirmations i think one of the things that she also said that was very resonating to me that she was talking about actually writing down the things that you said bad about yourself. Like, I actually like that because I always write down affirmations and, you know, maybe, you know, goals or uh, checklists, things I have to achieve so I can, you know, check them off. But I never really reflect on how many times in a day I actually you put lie myself to yourself or will you say lie to myself, put yeah. myself down or, you yeah. know, all that. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to, again, a lot of the stuff, I am going to implement into my day to day. And I hope all of you guys are able to kind of take, you know, obviously into your day to to get you get better. Um, I appreciate all the tips, Brittany. I'm like I said, I, I, oh, wait, please share your handle. How can we find you on Instagram? Just so we can make sure everybody, you know, is able to connect and, you know, make sure we, you know, follow your book and uh, you in general. Yes, thank you. So on Instagram, I'm just at Britt Frank, B-R-I-T-T-F-R-A-N-K. And you can buy the book wherever. And it's, uh, you can find me on my website, scienceofstuck.com. And I'm going to send you a book because yeah. Ooh, it's, yay. Uh, thank you. It's really good. And what I think is really great about it is there'll be so many things that you can think about with relevant clients and be like, oh, hot damn. This is something we need to discuss, or this is a checklist I need to give this person to work through, or you know what? Sure, you know, no, this so, mm -hmm. Clients are in for it this time. <laughs> and, and I think what I love most, though, Britt, is you bring it back to, to just some really simple stand in front of the mirror and ask yourself with honesty some hard some hard questions. You know, um, I think everyone has the capability to do this, so it shouldn't be something that you feel is too big to to tackle um what would you like to give as parting advice to anyone that's listening to our podcast when it comes to the process of being stuck oh that's so good so what we know about the brain is that it changes the brain is plastic so the brain you have right now as you're listening to this is not the brain you're going to have in a week in a month in a year mm -hmm. so to sit here and say this is just who i am i'm just you know i'm just an addictive personality or i'm just a lazy person is biological bullshit <laughs> we are not set in stone you can change and see <laughs> I love, I love you. Oh my God. I love you. That is you just like, freaking awesome. Put note that and just send that out to every client we've got. <laughs> I think that everyone is, needs to hear this, you know. I love, love it. Yeah. Literally. Everyone's going to have to rewind and just re-listen again to the podcast. <laughs> make sure you take notes again and go back and ask yourself yeah. these questions, you know, and make sure you know go and find her book. Uh, we are going to be keeping up with it. If, and as you know, please make sure to comment, like, share the podcast and yeah. let us know any other future topics or any other future guests that you want to see on the podcast. And you can also give a five-star rating if you like this podcast over on all of our platforms. We appreciate all you listeners 
business and just being here on our journey. We're hoping, you know, you took some health, fitness, internal work, you know, obviously self-discovery type of tips, and you're able to, you know, implement this into your day-to-day life. And we would love to see if you are starting to, you know, question yourself with anything that Britt's talked about today and anything that resonated and you've gone, I've got to do this. We'd love to hear about it. We'd love to see you at some point share that, you know, that process, what it was like for you, what you've gotten out of it. If you have made change, you know, at some point in the months to come, we'd love to see you post and share that and reference us and maybe tag Brit as well. Um, because, you know, this is this is what we're here to do, share the information so that, you know, change can happen. And I think Brit's work is phenomenal. So please, please go check her out. And I highly recommend The Science of Stuck. Yes. Until next time, guys. Thank you, Brittany, for being on the podcast. And we will stay in touch. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Good deal. Good job. I love with both of you. Oh my God. Seriously. Like this is the most fun interview I've done since I've launched the book. Like it's so (laughs) that's awesome. (laughs) I was interested. I mean, oh holy shit, the stuff you were saying. I'm like, I I mean again, I gotta get on the bandwagon. Ali sent me your stuff. And I was like trying right before the call and I was already so busy. I was send, like, me send me your email, send me your info. Oh yeah, I got, let me make sure I send you my stuff. I just me. wish I had met Brit like 15 years ago. My life could have oh, been, cool. my life could have been like so much more powerful moving forward, so much faster. <laughs> no, 15 yeah. years ago, I was a disaster. <laughs> I was the cigarette I would love to know your story because that's even more empowering oh, to, to yeah. show clients again that you share your story so it's more of a look at this freaking amazing woman and how she's able to you know obviously overcome everything she did so many people with especially with drug addiction I think are just like you said always stuck in their in their own this is how I am and when you said about the plastic brain I'm like yes this is awesome so I'm again sharing I'm sending you my stuff but um look forward to yes being in contact with you I think we're both going to be able to send clients to you 100% definitely I was going to say I don't know if you do zoom at all but if you don't don't need to you need me to. to. I'm so so booked with private clients right now. So I've been doing oh. more speaking and more events because I can't yeah, do any more one on one sessions. You're already, okay. I'm, you, I'm next. You but if you ever have yeah. people that want to bring me in for a group, I am yeah. happy to come and do group hey, shit. Yeah. Q&A. Yeah, well, hey, you could do, you could still be doing the group stuff online though, which would be great because there, there's definitely opportunities, I think, to be discussing to corporates and small groups and yeah. teams. Even in that, I think she should totally be hired for one of the next events for sure. Yeah, definitely. I love that so much. Yeah, Yeah. well, I I had fun. Thank you for making that fun and obviously it being very informative. (laughs) I know what I can do to support, promote on my end. Really, like I've got the biggest fangirl crush on both of you right now. So, oh, we will we we all have this edited and um my fiance who's that's whose name you've got here i was wondering um, about that i'm like who is christos yeah Yeah. he'll have this edited um and then we will launch that next week so we we will send you the links and the tags and you'll have all the stuff the digital stuff that you can throw into your story and yeah just put it on your stories. That's usually how we'll market it. Hop on the stories, talk about it real quick, and then just post, you know, that all our listeners already know we kind of have a weekly one. So this time it'll kind of showcase you. So yeah, but thank you. I'm excited. This is going to be a good one. Yes. Thanks. Right, I'll, I'll see you next week, babe. <laughs> all right. Bye. 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 Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Queen Divas Queens of Fitness podcast. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at Queen Divas Pod, on Twitter at Queen Divas 4, and follow our hosts on Instagram, Alicia at Alicia Gowans underscore WBFF Pro, and Steph at Stephanie Ayala 7. See you all next week.